Only so many teams can be considered winners. This team is on paper better. New coach who feels like he's going to have a better connection with his quarterback. We'll see. Uh, six and a half wins according to Caesars for the Jaguars. We're deep enough in the offseason to have a pretty good idea of what all 32 NFL teams' final rosters will look like. So it would seem like the perfect time to bring you our annual way-too-early win-loss predictions for all 32 NFL clubs. Arizona Cardinals, 9-8. We really want to think that the Cardinals will build off an 11-win season, but it's just so difficult to trust this team after so many late-season collapses. Furthermore, the Cardinals had a rather uninspiring offseason. They found no replacement for Chandler Jones and really didn't do much to fix up the secondary. Throw in the DeAndre Hopkins suspension and a brutal 2022 schedule, and it all adds up to single-digit wins for Cliff Kingsbury's club. The Atlanta Falcons, 5-12. The Falcons are much worse on paper than the 2021 group that overachieved with seven wins last year. Marcus Mariota is a downgrade for Matt Ryan, and we know Calvin Ridley isn't playing this season. Oh well, at least the Falcons will be in prime position to take one of the top quarterbacks in next year's draft. Baltimore Ravens, 11-6. A clean bill of health plus the arrivals of Kyle Hamilton and Marcus Williams gives Baltimore the NFL's best secondary. On the offensive side of the ball, a healthy Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dobbins, and Gus Edwards should help Baltimore's ground game get going again. They're going to be right back in Super Bowl contention. Buffalo Bills, 12-5. It's easy to understand why they're the Super Bowl favorites. They already had the most balanced roster in the league, then they went and added Von Miller and Kyar Elam to a defense that finished number one in both yards and scoring last year. Is that even fair? It's not even fair. It's like fishing with dynamite. Carolina Panthers, 3-14. So much for solving their quarterback situation, Sam Darnold is still the starter, as third-round pick Matt Corral will need some time to develop. Anyone else think that Matt Rule will be the first coach who gets axed during the regular season? Chicago Bears, 5-12. Not sure if any team has had a worse offseason than the Bears. What have they really done to help Justin Fields on the offensive side of the ball again? At least they have four winnable games in their division. Plus, the Bears get to play the relatively weak NFC East. So that should be enough for the team to avoid the league's worst record in 2022. Cincinnati Bengals, 11-6. The AFC North will be much harder for the Bengals to win in 2022, but Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase are going to get better, especially now that the Bengals have an actual offensive line in place. The arrival of versatile safety Daxton Hill will further improve a defense that enjoyed a remarkable turnaround last year, so expect Cinti to once again be in the running for the AFC crown. Cleveland Browns, 7-10. This prediction is going off the assumption that Deshaun Watson will be suspended for a lengthy period. Say, five to eight games at the very least. There's no way the Browns are getting through the AFC North with Baker Mayfield or Jacoby Brissett as the QB during that stretch. There was enough talent for the Browns to be competitive without Watson, but getting past all those stacked AFC teams with legitimate Super Bowl hopes? Ha! Not buying it. Dallas Cowboys, 9-8. Feels like the boys are doomed to disappoint. Losing Amari Cooper, Cedric Wilson, Randy Gregory, Lael Collins, and Connor Williams just might be too much to overcome. Dak Prescott is operating with less weaponry, and a very difficult schedule only adds to our belief that America's team will regress considerably in 2022. Denver Broncos, 10-7. The 2019 and 2021 Broncos teams both won seven games with terrible play from their quarterbacks. Well, now the Broncos have some dude named Russell Wilson leading a prolific offense that features Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, Devontae Williams, and Melvin Gordon. So hey, say hello to the franchise's first winning season since 2016. Detroit Lions, 5-12. Aiden Hutchinson and Jameson Williams were added at the draft. Tack on a healthy Jeffrey Okuda and what should be a monster second year from Panay Sewell, and it all adds up to a year of progress for the Lions. Green Bay Packers, 12-5. So what if they don't have Devontae Adams anymore? Green Bay is 7-0 without him under head coach Matt LaFleur. Aaron Rodgers will find a way to make it work with Christian Watson as his new go-to receiver. Plus, their already stacked defense added Quay Walker and Devontae Wyatt. J.R. Alexander is healthy after playing just four games last year, and David Bakhtiari is back after missing all but one game in 2021. Expect them to be in contention for the NFC's top seed yet again. Houston Texans, 5-12. 
The Texans are on the right path to a rebuild here, but let's not get too carried away. We need to see how Davis Mills fares throughout the course of an entire season. And despite Lovey Smith's strong track record as a defensive coach, he sure has his work cut out for him. There's not a lot of game-breaking talent to work with, and with two Super Bowl hopefuls residing in Houston's division, it's gonna be tough for them to top five wins. Indianapolis Colts, 10-7. If the AFC wasn't so darn brutal, we would happily give the Colts more wins. Matt Ryan is certainly a massive upgrade over Carson Wentz, and yet have to think that a team that had seven pro bowlers simply can't underachieve like that again. Jacksonville Jaguars, 4-13. There will certainly be progress in Duval, with Doug Peterson calling the shots over Urban Meyer. Plus, improvements seem inevitable for Trevor Lawrence following a brutal rookie year. But the Jaguars still lack firepower on both sides of the ball and don't have much talent to compete with the other AFC teams. Kansas City Chiefs, 12-5. We're not so worried about the Tyree kill loss. Patrick Mahomes has enough weaponry in Travis Kelsey, Marquez Valdez-Scandling, Juju Smith-Schuster, Sky Moore, and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Rookies George Carl Aftis and Trent McDuffie will also make significant differences on a defense that lacked game-changers in 2021. Las Vegas Raiders, 8-9. We know, we know, they added Devontae Adams and Chandler Jones to a team that won 10 games and earned a wildcard spot last year. But unfortunately for the Raiders, their other three main division rivals all made significant moves as well. The Raiders, by the way, were 7-2 in one-score games last season. So, yes, they were lucky in some ways, and even though this is Vegas, they cannot expect to get lucky every single time. Los Angeles Chargers, 10-7. The Chargers won nine games last year and missed the postseason by a hair. Well, they rivals of JC Jackson and Khalil Mack to an underachieving defense can only help this unit improve in 2022. An already stellar O-line got even better with the draft selection of Zion Johnson. Justin Herbert has been a superstar through his first two years, but we're confident he hasn't even hit his peak yet. The Chargers should be back in the playoffs for the first time since 2015. Los Angeles Rams, 11-6. Yes, they lost several key pieces from their Super Bowl championship team. They also still have Matt Stafford, Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup, Jalen Ramsey, and Leonard Floyd. Oh, and the Rams added Bobby Wagner and Allen Robinson in free agency. We all know about the Super Bowl hangover, but it won't affect these Rams. They're going to hit double-digit wins again and remain a prime Super Bowl contender. Miami Dolphins, 9-8. The Dolphins should be much better on paper after adding Tyree Kill, Cedric Wilson, Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert, and Sony Michelle on offense. Not to mention the additions of Taron Armstead and Connor Williams to the O-line. But again, the Dolphins aren't the only AFC team that made big-time moves in the offseason. And they play in a very tough division that features the powerhouse Bills and New England Patriots. This isn't to say that Miami had a bad offseason by any means. It's just, there are only so many wins to go around for everybody in the AFC. Minnesota Vikings. 8-9. New GM and head coach, but pretty much the same roster. Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, and Dalvin Cook round out a potent offense that'll help keep mini and playoff contention. But the defense isn't getting any better, and the Vikings didn't make many notable moves to upgrade their roster. They're gonna stay in contention for the last wildcard spot, but that's it. New England Patriots, 9-8. We'd like to think the Patriots can build off a superb 10-win season in year two of the post-Tom Brady era, but Bill Belichick lost far more talent than he gained in the offseason. And we still don't have a clue who's replacing Josh McDaniels as the offensive play caller. While New England's main competitors in the AFC made moves to get better, Belichick was mostly quiet. The Pats should salvage another winning campaign, but getting back into the postseason is gonna be tough. New Orleans Saints 10 and 7. The Saints won nine games last season with four different quarterbacks. Well, they'll have a healthy James Winston back in the fold, and he'll have three new receivers in Chris Olave, Jarvis Landry, and a healthy Michael Thomas. And oh, the Saints added Tyron Matthew to one of the league's top five defenses. So it's back to double digit wins and a postseason appearance for Nola. New York Giants, 6 and 11. The Giants should be better with Brian Dable replacing Joe Judge as head coach, and with defensive guru Don Wink Martindale serving as the new DC. A healthy Saquon Barkley and a revamped O-line could make this offense finally click. 
but we have zero faith in Daniel Jones right now. Hence why we can't see a drastic turnaround for the G-Men in 2022. New York Jets, 6-11. The Jets have nowhere to go but up after a forgettable rookie year for Zach Wilson. The offense and defense were reloaded thanks to a phenomenal offseason from GM Joe Douglas, especially on draft weekend. If only the Jets didn't play in a division with three playoff contenders. They're still a ways away from getting there, but 2022 should be an encouraging year with plenty of progress for Gangrene. Philadelphia Eagles, 11-6. Not sure if any team had a better offseason than the Eagles. Howie Roseman aced the draft by landing run-stopping force Jordan Davis, giving up a first-rounder for Tennessee Titans superstar wideout A.J. Brown, and then by getting N'Kobe Dean in round three. In free agency, he brought in sack specialist Hassan Reddick and standout cover corner James Bradbury to line up beside Darius Slay. The Eagles overachieved with nine wins in a playoff spot last year. But now, they look like a legit Super Bowl contender. Pittsburgh Steelers, 8-9. The Steelers haven't had a losing season since 2003. It took a lot of close, gutsy wins for them to finish 9-7-1, which was barely enough for the wildcard spot in the AFC. Honestly, Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett, whichever one of them starts, will be an upgrade over a past-his-prime Ben Roethlisberger. So, why do we have them down for a losing record? Well, blame the Ravens and Bengals, who both reside in their division. It's gonna take admirable play from Trubisky or Pickett for the Steelers to have a shot at the postseason this year. San Francisco 49ers, 11-6. Yes, there are certainly questions as to whether or not Trey Lance is ready for prime time, but we fully trust Kyle Shanahan to make it work one way or another. There's too much talent on offense for the 49ers to flop. Plus, the defense is always going to be good enough to keep them in games. Seattle Seahawks, 6-11. The Seahawks will hit the field without Russell Wilson as their week one starter for the first time since 2011. In other words, painful days are ahead. We still don't know who starts in Week 1 between Geno Smith or Drew Locke, but the Seahawks have several winnable games on their schedule. Plus, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and their explosive rushing game should do enough to keep Seattle out of the NFC's basement. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 11-6. Tom Brady's unretirement changes everything for the Bucs, who are now back to Super Bowl contention. They have one of the league's toughest schedules, but they also still have arguably the game's best offense and a top 10 defense. With the GOAT still in control, 11 wins may actually be a little low for this Tampa team. Tennessee Titans, 10-7. The Titans are lucky that they can pick up four easy wins over Jacksonville and Houston. That alone should help them clinch another winning record under Mike Vrabel. But Ryan Tannehill's regression and the departure of A.J. Brown doesn't have us convinced that the Titans will vie for the conference's top seed again. Washington Commanders, 8-9. Say what you want about Carson Wentz, but he is sort of an upgrade over any QB Washington has used since 2019. Rookie Jahan Dotson finally supplies Terry McLaurin with a suitable sidekick, plus the defense should be much better with a healthy Chase Young back in the fold. A forgiving schedule will help Washington push for a winning record, but the most we can put them down for is 8-9. But what do you think your favorite team's regular season record will be? Join us in the comments section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.